It's an interesting idea, turning a little SSD into a portable NAS. Hey everybody, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the folks who share content on social media, and the incredible generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. More info on those awesome geeks later in the video. Alright, the folks at Synology sent this my way to test drive, share some thoughts. It's the B drive. It's a cute little external SSD. It's been out for a while, but I've been playing with more storage solutions on this channel, kind of dipping my toes into network attached solutions, and I'm always interested in mobile accessories. We've got options up to four terabytes of storage. I'm playing with the two terabyte drive. It's in a little plastic shell, decent drop protection, but it's not rated as a ruggedized drive or with high water resistance. Synology's hooks here, good data speeds, and their set of apps for streamlining device backups. Just testing the hardware, it's an SSD. It's a decently punchy little drive. Benchmarking scores do fall behind my Kingston, especially those write speeds, but real world use, it seemed pretty solid. It's one of those situations where I'd have to put the two drives side by side and time them to really point out those kinds of differences. I'm not sure they're felt as immediately. Now transferring between my Surface laptop, I was getting about 450 megabytes a second on batches of small files and around 600 megabytes a second on larger file transfers to the laptop. Now moving data from the laptop to the drive, I got 350 megabyte peak write speeds on batches of small files and 450 megabyte per second on larger files. So it's not the fastest portable SSD on the market. But again, there's a different hook here. It's more about automating backups and transferring data between systems. Now Synology includes B drive apps for PCs and mobile devices and streamlines mobile backups when you use your PC. So you plug this drive into a laptop, the app starts up, you open it on your phone, and it'll start moving data over to the drive. Or you can use the B Drive app on your PC, and when you plug the drive in, it can auto backup specific folders. It's very similar to that streamlined interaction that we expect from cloud service apps. Only, it should be a bit faster than uploading data to the cloud, and it's a hardware way to streamline your sneaker net backups, moving files back and forth between different systems, manually plugging a drive into different computers. I'm a big fan of using some hardware to support your gadgets instead of always relying on the cloud. Two terabytes of cloud storage is something you need to pay for every year. A two terabyte puck is something that you only need to buy once. But looking at this so long after its initial launch, I do share some of the security concerns where all your data is accessible if someone were to steal this. I was hoping that since launch, Synology might have added their own way to password protect or encrypt the drive. The apps work great at helping people transfer data quickly. I think there would be a benefit to also delivering a simple way to set up some basic password protection on the drive. Synology solution for their more business grade products, I'd love to see just a little flavor of that arrive on something that can fit in your pocket, something that could easily fall out of a pocket or a purse or a backpack. Synology hasn't rolled their own, but it's not all doom and gloom. One of the solutions they point customers to is using BitLock you can encrypt the drive that way, and when you put in your password to unlock it, the Synology apps will function normally. Storage stuff can be a bit intimidating, so I wish Synology could work out a way to hold a user's hand through setting up some slightly more advanced protections. BitLocker does work, that's what I did to lock this drive down. But that's also a touch less accessible because you know you need Windows 11 Pro to set that up. So we get to the end of this and it's a fine little portable drive with some nifty software people might like. I know there are arguments where you can set up a lot of what this thing can do using portable apps or open source software, but I still think we should appreciate a well-polished presentation and with software that's getting regular updates and is available in common uh, public app stores for your phones. Using it today, a while after it was originally launched, the biggest difference between now and then is price. The costs here are much closer to other two terabyte drives and every manufacturer has different levels of app and software support. And if you're trying to help out a friend or someone in your family who's not super tech savvy, but a person who can handle plugging a drive in a USB port and opening an app, this could be a fantastic solution for helping them back up important files. I've spoken to a few friends lately that are starting to get tired of everything being a subscription and needing more and more cloud 
especially as their kids start using up more storage on those cloud accounts too. I think it's always a good time to look at some hardware and I'm always going to enjoy little portable solutions too. So I've got a link below where you can find more information on Synology. I know their reputation a bit more in the business sector, you know, big boxes of hard drives. So it's been kind of interesting playing around with some of their more consumer solutions too. And we'll be following up this conversation soon as I check out the B Station, a larger proper network attached solution that should also make it really easy for folks to back up their important data. I know networking equipment, routers, and big hard drives, they're not always the sexiest videos to watch, but I love digging into this stuff. And now more than ever, I think these are solutions a lot of consumers should be checking out, learning a bit more about. As I do all of that testing on these types of products, the folks who get to see the results of my testing first are my amazing patrons. All of the super generous people over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. A, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart, as these are the people that are literally helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. I greatly appreciate everybody who's out there sharing videos across social media. That really helps us with all of these terrible algorithms. But if you have the means, I hope you'll consider joining the community at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Just an amazing group of geeks, super fun to hang out with. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but these days I'm spending a bit more time on the Mastodons, a lot less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters, and I will catch you all on the next review.